Hello, good morning, and welcome to Business on News Desk. The Commissioner General of the Ghana Revenue Authority, GRA, Mr. Kofi, Emmanuel Kofinti, says the authority will be adopting a more business friendly strategy in tax collection following government's decision to be hard on compliance, coupled with the decision to abolish some taxes. There are fears the revenue agency will be tougher on firms when it comes to payment of taxes, but the Commissioner General assures that this will rather be different. We are going to treat the taxpayer as a customer. A customer well treated interact positively with the system. So that we are trying to know our customer. And I mean, the banks have it. Know your customer, KYC. I don't think we know our customers well enough. Going forward, we would want to know our customers even more. And as we know them more, we know their businesses, the things that they do, it helps us to interact. And when the customer knows that you are there for him, the customer will give a positive reaction to the thing that you do with him. And so going forward, we will be more interactive with the customers. Well, I would like the word other different things are you also going to do to meet the 44 billion uh, if, if that there's minus the grants there's the tax revenue bit so that you can meet it maybe even before the year end you know the example the minister gave where there was something 33,000 and by interaction and a thousand going somewhere at the end of the day he got it for 8,000 we would want to do mechanism that would ensure that the proper rates are collected for the system. Okay. When you take the self-employed, the informal sector, they're making like just about 4% of the direct tax. Look at the numbers in that area. We would want the situation will beef up the interaction and then the collection the self-employed. Possibly move it to like 10%. And we are going to be focused on performance at the local levels. Okay. So that at the end of the day, when you look at it, the LTO picks up about 66 percent of the bill, of the revenues. It means that the rest in totality contribute about 34 percent. That shouldn't be the case. We want a situation where we will be able to tell the linkage between the staff, expenditure on the staff at the local level, and the kind of revenue which is coming at the local level. And when that is being done in the, at, the staff, at the local level, the staff know that he's been an, an expense on the system. Nobody needs telling them they have to back up. These are some of the ways we would use to try and be for revenue. And away from that, women entrepreneurs in Ghana have been urged to keep their financial accounts intact in order to boost their incomes and grow their businesses. This came up as a network session organized by the Echo Bank to commemorate the International Women's Day marked on the 8th of March. Amelie Josu has more in this report. The networking session sought to equip women with the needed financial tips to enhance the smooth running of their businesses. The participants were taken through a thorough orientation in bookkeeping as well as the need for documentation. The initiative also sought to rope in more women into banking activities. Center Manager for the Ecobank Direct Branch, Abna Labiibwa, encouraged women to prioritize record keeping and building their business. We don't take businesses seriously in Ghana. We always think business is just getting up, finding a product, going out there and selling it on the market. But from today's program, we've, we've actually realized that even the fuel that you use to go out there to sell your products should be budgeted for. Even the electricity you use for your products should be budgeted for. But most of us take it for granted. We think business is just getting up there, bringing up a product and going to sell. So um, that's why we fail. And also I'll touch on the, the um, I would like to say that women in general have a lot of chores on their hands. It's a balancing act for us. We have families, we have husbands to take care of, we have children, we have other functions, church functions, and we have a whole lot of things, I mean, in our, in our pockets to deal with. So um, this meeting was to, to, to teach us how to take our businesses seriously, how to add on finance, how to add on marketing, how to add on what's available for, from the banks to make our businesses profitable. 
Now, away from that, the Institute of Statistical, Economic and Social Research, ISA, is giving an assessment of the 2017 budget right here at Alisa Hotel in Accra. Let's now go to the hotel to get excerpts of the program. Budget of any country is a signal of intent. And the credibility of the budget is critical if you can, or indeed if you have to use your budget to signal to investors what your intentions are. Now, if you signal to investors that you are actually going to spend X amount and you go beyond it, when indeed you haven't even had a windfall, then clearly you are doing something which is problematic. Um, and also because if you look at the components where the overspending was recorded, these are components that are quite, um, quote unquote, loose to pin down. Now, we've had discussions around um, the use of the statutory funds to finance some of the initiatives that um, the government has proposed. And essentially, people have argued against um, sort of um, creating fiscal space that way. But if you look at the 2016, for all the statutory funds, all of them, we underspent. OK? And this is not even for the signal of intent at the beginning of the year. That is the original budget. This is the signal of intent during the midterm. So midterm, we had actually revised the estimates upwards, OK, and had been given approval by parliament. OK, so from the beginning, you said you spent X. Um, you've come back, you say you want to spend X plus Y. But then at the end of the year, the statutory funds Okay, that's which is supposed to be written in law. Those funds we do not actually spend up to the limit that we actually got approval for, but on an item such as goods and services. So in my opinion, I think that it is quite problematic. We need to let the budget be credible. And so I don't want to say it's irresponsible, um, but what it means is that you actually will compromise the credibility of your budget if year in, year out, you actually overspend. But this is particularly problematic, as um, Dr. Aka said, in election years. So you tend to find that the immediate year post-election, we are able to keep our discipline. And that is why we call it fiscal discipline, <laughs> OK? so. We were not disciplined. Is it a good thing? No, it isn't. I don't think it is a good thing. OK, it's my, my humble view. Okay, so thank, uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, All right, so that was a post-2017 uh, budget analysis being organized by the Institute of Statistical, Social, and Economic Research, ISA, at the Alisa Hotel here in Accra. We'll bring you more on that in our subsequent bulletins. That ends business for now. My name is Imano Abwachi. You're actually coming up sports.